The Beef School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pioneer Hybrid Canada. To find more Beef School episodes, go to beefschool.ca. Jay Strover here with realagriculture.com and we're here for another episode of The Beef School. And today I'm joined by Bree Kiln, a University of Saskatchewan PhD student and partner in Beef Smart Consulting. Bree, you're doing some very interesting research when it comes to legumes and pasture grazing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, so uh, this project actually started in 2015. And so it was uh, research that was done at the Western Beef Development Centre at Lanigan, Saskatchewan. And uh, basically there's a couple reasons why we wanted to do this project. First is that we know that <clears throat> um, legumes and pastures and forages are the backbone to our grazing industry and they're very important to producers and a lot of those pastures uh, tend to get run down, they get um, tired, they need to be rejuvenated <clears throat> and so some producers will look at breaking those pastures up and reseeding them but uh, one strategy to rejuvenate them without having to do that would be to look at sod seeding. And so sod seeding is where a producer would take a low uh, minimal disturbance drill of some sort and they would directly sod seed their new forages or the new legumes into that existing pasture stand. And so we wanted to look at two species of legumes, uh, namely sanfoin and sicer milk vetch and see if we were able to sod seed those legumes uh, into an existing pasture stand and have them persist under grazing management. The second uh, reason why we wanted to look at these two species specifically is that they're both a non-bloat legume. So one of the concerns with grazing uh, pastures, specifically pastures that are high in alfalfa or high in uh, legumes can be that they can cause bloat. And so there's been research that has shown that even 20% inclusion into those pastures of a non-bloat legume like sanfoin or sicer milk vetch can reduce bloat. And so we wanted to look at those two species specifically and see if we were able to introduce them into these existing pasture stands and have them persist under that grazing situation. And so um, we wanted to look at animal performance. Uh, we wanted to look at uh, soil health. We wanted to look at plant uh, productivity and forage quality as well. Um, and then we also looked at uh, some of the effect on the animal in terms of uh, rumen fermentation and methane production. And so, as I said before, this trial started in 2015. So we had an existing pasture stand. It was an old uh, meadow brome alfalfa pasture that had been in production for about 13 years. And so we sod seeded uh, these two species into that field. So the field was 75 acres, and then we split it into 15 five acre paddocks. And so those species then were seeded into those uh, paddocks and we also had a control to allow us to look at that. So um, we seeded it in 2015 and then we grazed it consecutively with steers, uh, 2016, 17 and 18. So some of the measurements that we looked at, again, we looked at animal performance. So uh, we looked at those steers and how they grew and how their um, body weight increased over the summer as they were grazing those paddocks. We looked at the forage quality, which is another very important um, factor for a producer um, when they're looking at rejuvenating or they're looking at, you know, looking at um, those pasture stands. Uh, we looked at forage yield and to see if we had a bump in yield and then again we wanted to, to look and see whether or not those species could maintain their um, level in the stand over the, that three years of grazing. And so when we looked at um, the animal performance we did see a nice bump in weight gain for animals that graze those pastures. So we had about a 20% increase in weight gain for animals that were grazing pastures that had been rejuvenated with those non-bloat legumes. Uh, when we looked at forage quality, again, we saw a nice bump in crude protein. So we saw about a 2% increase in uh, crude protein on a dry matter basis. So again, a nice bump in protein, of course, which would be expected from including those legumes. 
Um, when we looked at uh, things like forage yield, again, we were able to um, have a marginal increase in forage yield. And again, combined with the quality um, that we saw, that led to that increase in that 20% increase in weight gain for those animals. Um, as far as the persistence between the species, we did see a bit of a difference. So the Sicer milk vetch did maintain its um, level um, that it was seeded at. Um, so about 20% in that stand over that three years. The sandfoin, uh, the species that I had, or the variety that I had in my plots, we did see that it um, tended to drop off a little bit over that three years, but we had significant drought as well. And so we um, feel that that drought likely impacted its ability to persist in the stand. Um, and then the, one of the final things that we looked at was methane production. And so again, um, we wanted to get an idea of if we were able to see um, a reduction in methane production from the animals uh, that were grazing those non-bloat legumes. And we did see a decrease in methane production. So that, number one, <clears throat> is a benefit for the producer in terms of uh, better ener energy available to that animal. That methane is, um, it's expensive for that animal to uh, emit. And so when we can um, have animals that are able to uh, lower their methane production, there's a possibility that they would have uh, more energy for themselves in terms of growth and production, as well as the environmental impact and the benefit to that. So um, that was as well something uh, beneficial that we saw from the in the production. There is um, more research that needs to be done in terms of different varieties. There's new varieties um, specifically of Sanfoin. Um, AC Glenview is coming on board um, and going to be available in the next year or two. So um, in terms of having more research looking at specifics to uh, different varieties of Sanfoin and Sicer milk vetch, I think that that's something that could um, be uh, further beneficial for producers, but overall um, the findings from the study um, show that rejuvenating and using non-bloat legumes in a rejuvenation strategy for some of those old and tired pasture stands can lead to a bump in yield, um, bump in forage growth, uh, better quality, and of course that's all going to impact that producer's bottom line um, and hopefully some higher gains on those animals that are grazing. We did look at economics as well because that was a huge factor in terms of whether or not a producer um, is going to make the decision or going to want to make the decision uh, to uh, rejuvenate their pastures and we did see that the cost benefit um, of rejuvenation was roughly about uh, $20 an acre back to the producer. So again, a nice bump in revenue and that um, took into account the gains that were seen off of that uh, pasture versus um, the control paddock that didn't have that rejuvenation and had you know, a decrease in uh, weight gain from those animals. All right, good news for producers. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Stay tuned for more episodes of The Beef School brought to you by Pioneer Hybrid Canada.